This is Our View, brought to you by the proud members of the Washington Federation of State Employees, the people who work for you. When danger occurs, we get away from the threat as quickly as possible. However, for public employees, it's their job to rush to the threat, such as recently in Brussels. That was a case on 9-11 as the firefighters went up the stairs at the World Trade Center as the occupants came down. So too it was the case last November when terrorists struck in the city of Paris. People fled while public workers, medical teams, firefighters and police moved into the area. Also moving into the scene was longtime contributor to Our View, Benjamin Marcus, who was there with his camera before the gunfire stopped and made these observations about the public service workers. On November 13, 2016, Paris was attacked by Islamist terrorist group Daesh. In different locations in the center of Paris, sirens could be heard everywhere. Since these attacks happened in different areas, in the 10th and 11th arrondissement of Paris, but also at the Stade de France, the French stadium. Paris has a population of over 2.5 million people within the city and 12 million for all the Parisian region. Being France's capital, every measure must be taken and anticipated to ensure the safety of its population in case of any emergency. However, terrorist attacks are unpredictable. We don't always know about the emergency services who are on standby to rescue us. On November 13th, 130 people died and over 350 were wounded that night. There were over 120 medical teams and 450 paramedics that included the Protection Civile de Paris, the civilian protection of the city of Paris. The Protection Civile is a federation that specializes in first aid emergency assistance. From traffic accidents to gunshot wounds, even with divers and search teams. Their job is to be the first aid on location and assist medical ER services with all their logistics. Etienne Bloom is one of the coordinators. He has worked on many emergency situations and was working in Paris on November 13th. The Civilian Protection of Paris was created over 50 years ago with the support of the General de Gaulle in 1965. The objective was to create a federation of paramedics on a national level. Every member of the Protection Civile has a high training level. Every week to every month they meet and practice to make sure they are not forgetting anything. By being the first ones on site when someone is wounded or suffering a heart attack, they must know all the proper techniques and anticipate any situation. Our main mission as paramedics is to respond to any medical emergency. We work with the police department, the fire department and the national paramedics department. On the evening of November 13th, I received a call from the Paris dispatcher notifying me of a major attack in Paris. I drove straight to our base and started working on logistics right away. Nothing prepares you for this kind of mission, especially in Paris. Most of the time we deal with urban emergencies. But that felt more like a first aid war situation. When I was on my way over, I was wondering, what will I see over there? What was shocking for us is not to see one body on the ground, but it was to see many people on the ground and having to step over these bodies. We are used to seeing one person wounded, but when you see hundreds of people on the ground with blood and the smell, it touches you, it affects you. We have had many debriefing meetings between us. We still have these meetings. So our paramedics that were there that night can still pursue their work and still be the best on the field. We want to be able to help in any kind of situation. That's what our job is all about. Benjamin Marcus for Our View, Paris, France. 
The Federation joined the Seattle King County NAACP News Conference at South Seattle College to address the bullying and harassment of the school's employees. Behaviors like bullying, harassment, discriminations are determined, are determined in mental and physical health as well as to serve that we provide for students. We desire to treat with dignity and respect. And, and the institute that values racial, racial diversity, we demand that complaints and institutes and individual race, racism are taken seriously and, resol and be resolved by human resources. And I, I, I feel unsafe. I, 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 I threaten so many times. I feel unsafe in this world. We are struggling with bullying, inadequate treatment, favoritism, and a lack of respect. We have the voices, we have voiced our concerns to our management, human resources department, and the college administration with little to no acknowledgement of their part that there are major problems happening at this college. We are speaking today to have our voices heard in hopes of opening of communication with South Seattle College that will lead to solutions to these problems. A case pending before the United States Supreme Court, if found in favor of the plaintiff, will cause great harm to the rights of public employees across the nation. It's a case brought by a teacher against the California Teachers Union. Be assured, this isn't a case of a teacher claiming her rights are being violated. Its real purpose is to harm public employee unions and then attack all organized workers in the country. So Rebecca Friedrichs is a teacher in Southern California, and uh, she disagreed with a position that California Teachers Association, their state council, which is a, a democratically elected body. And so this democratically elected body makes, t took a position on a, pro on a ballot proposition which, which dealt with same-sex marriage. The state council decided to, to support the no on no campaign, which would eff effectively um, allow gay marriage. And Rebecca Friedrichs uh, felt that she didn't support that same position so that her dues shouldn't go towards that political activity. The lawyers representing Rebecca Friedrichs um, have been before the Supreme Court before, um, two times to defend, to, uh, to try to throw out the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obama, Obamacare. She lost at the state level at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, um, and then this, it went to the Supreme Court very quickly, um, probably about 18 months. It's just an, it's an attack on unions. It's trying to weaken unions' positions. It's not about freedom of speech. And, and when you actually look at her case, her premise is that unions, because everything they do is political in nature, that they're violating her freedom of speech rights, which in my view, a union is a democracy. The goal is to weaken unions. It's, it's to weaken unions' political clout, to weaken unions um, by making their systems more difficult to navigate, um, I mean, th this essentially would create a, a free rider class within our ranks, where we would have members that don't, they're, they're not obligated to pay union dues, but they would still be, we would still have a duty of fair representation of them. This has been going on for years, to, to demonize unions, to say that the unions are you know, the problem, this is their fault. Um, so it's the, that old saying, you know, first they came for this group of people, but I wasn't part of that group. Well, right now they're coming for public employees. Next, it's, it's going to be whoever's sitting out there, whoever's the, the next big chip to fall. So it's, this isn't a, this is where unions need to, to collectively come together. And really this is, you know, talk about activist judges, you know, we're, we're putting our societal, what we've decided as a society, that this is the way that we are going to run, that, that workers have the right to bargain collectively. And we're, we're saying, we're putting that into question, and we're putting that on the backs of, of nine individuals, of which I don't know how many of them have actually been union members. The employees of the Carrier Furnace Manufacturing Facility in Indianapolis were called together for a meeting so that management can make an announcement. Imagine if you were one of those employees and you heard the livelihood for your family was going away. 
The moment was captured by one of those employees on a cell phone camera. It became clear that the best way to stay competitive and protect the business for long term is to move production from our facility in Indianapolis to Monterey, Mexico. <laughs> Here. Listen, we've got I've got information that's important to share as a part of the transition. If we can go ahead, if you don't want to hear it, other people do. So let's quiet down. Thank you very much. We also intend to relocate the distribution center from Indianapolis as well. Relocating our operations to Monterey will allow us to maintain high levels of product quality at competitive prices and continue to serve the extremely price sensitive marketplace. I want to be clear, this is strictly a business decision. This was an extremely difficult decision. It was made most difficult because I understand that it will have an impact on all of you, your families, and the community. Another job export to Mexico occurred when Mondelez, the corporate owner of Nabisco, closed an Illinois plant and put 400 people out of work. This occurred after the state and city governments gave Nabisco tax breaks to keep jobs in Chicago. The jobs left town and Nabisco kept the public's money. Mondelez and their corporate greed has decided to cut 600 jobs and move these jobs to Salinas, Mexico. Mondelez wants to send all of these jobs to Mexico, ignoring the fact that in order to have a consumer-based society in this country, you have to be consumers. Please join us at fightforamericanjobs.org. Join us at Fight for American Jobs. Org. This has been Our View, brought to you by the members of the Washington Federation of State Employees. We remind you, when you accept a paycheck for your hard work, you don't give up your rights. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next month.